Wingwood, Oklahoma is a wildlife refuge that's home to a variety of creatures. Due to the recent strains on the economy, many places that shelter animals have been forced to shut down, leaving them in need of a new place to go. Also at the park lives a more familiar but extremely determined little deshund named Abby. While some of the bigger beasts around here might think of Abby as a sausage on a bun, there's a certain animal who likes Abby for what's on the inside. Bone Digger, the Barbary Lion. Oh, I can't say that I've ever seen anything like this bond. They're always just loving on each other. Bone Digger gets along with all four of the wiener dogs, but for some reason, Abby gets away with a lot more. Him and Abby's had a special bond from, from the first day. Not long after Bone Digger was born, Abby came along. They were probably all introduced within uh, being the age of six to nine weeks old. And it was love at first sight. And by that time, Bone Digger's got a little bit of size to him, and uh, Bone Digger just mothered it. The most amazing thing is, is definitely the bond that they've built. Known for their little legs and big nerves, Dashun's lack of self-awareness in terms of their size can sometimes get them into sticky situations. Me and the weenie dogs are about the only relationship that he has. Um, nobody else can go in the cage with him. Uh, he runs them out, gets aggressive with them. He's never tried that with me. I I've never been in fear while I'm in there, and the weenie dogs have never been in fear while in there. Um, believe it or not, the weenie dogs actually overpower him. I think they've got their size differences worked out. One minute they'll be running around the house chasing him, and, and then the next minute he's chasing them. So they reverse roles. Contrary to what you might expect between a lion and a dog, Abby and Bone Digger are creating their own unique dynamic. You know, we've actually split them up. Uh, when I go in to weed eat the cage, um, the weenie dogs attack the head of the weed eater. So I have to kick the weenie dogs out of the cage, and Bone Digger just paces and cries up and down the fence. And then as soon as I'm done weed eating, I let the weenie dogs back in, and he counts his weenie dogs, makes sure they're all there, and uh, just loves all over them. He loves on them. They usually lick his mouth and, and lay on him and roll over. Um, it's a pretty cool reunion. Act like they've been gone forever, and you know, it's only been five or 10 minutes. And uh, every time we do that, it happens. It's pretty clear that these two care for each other. I love Abby the most because she is, Bone Digger's my favorite lion here in the park, and, and she's just really, really his biggest companion. They're just, I, I think there's a bigger bond between Abby and Bone Digger than the other three weenie dogs. I mean, he still cares for them all. He protects them, he makes sure they're all right. You know, he's even, he's even bit at the fleas like you see dogs doing each other. It's just crazy what they do. The lesson that you get from Abby and Bone Digger living together is he is a, a wild animal, but he can be tamed. The weenie dog is a tamed animal, but it can be wild. There's a little bit of each animal in each one of them. Nestled in the highlands near Sault Ste. Marie, Ontario, is an 80-acre horse farm. Joan and her family came here for fresh air and a new way of life. And the one in charge of keeping them all safe is a guard dog named Titan. Titan's breed is known as the Kuvas. The Kuvas are guardian dogs and they protect from wildlife. As big as he is, it has no bearing on his courage. He will go after to protect, but when it comes to the horses, he will run away. Titan is very skittish of the other horses. He kind of shies away when they go towards him. Titan keeps his distance from the horses. So imagine the surprise when out of nowhere, he took a liking to a small foal. A quarter horse named Indy. Titan and Indy's relationship to me is a very unique relationship. Right away, Titan took an interest in Indy, you know, sniffing him, and then you slowly started to see him licking him and following him around. Right from the start, you can see that there is almost like a respect or a bond between them. Usually, Titan is like kind of skittish of the horses, but he made the choice when it came to Indy to be friends with him, to protect him, and to do the job that he was here for. But it seems to have come to be more than that. When Indy developed pneumonia, when I went in to check on Indy, Titan always comes with me, and Indy, of course, was lying down as he had been and Titan started going over and cleaning them and licking them. But Indy was too ill to do anything about it. 
And with him being so ill, he just took it on as affection. He wasn't alone. There was somebody else, another living being, taking care of him. And I'm sure the affection felt good. I honestly believe horses and dogs, animals, sense the need for compassion. Titan grooms Indy. He licks them and he cleans them. I don't know that they actually realize they're different breeds. Me saying, here, here's the lead line, Titan, you want to take him for a walk? And off they go. And I was like, wow, okay, well, there's something else he'll do for me. I don't have to do it. <laughs> With Indy, it's like he's totally relaxed. There's no competition between them. I would never want to test what would happen to Indy if Titan wasn't here. It, it brings happiness to him. You can see it in their eyes, and I would never take that away from them. The Kuvos, being a guardian dog, they're a work dog. They need a job to do. And eventually, I believe that Titan has discovered that his job has become to take care of Indy. My first intention was to just nurse Indy back to health to sell to somebody else. <laughs> but seeing the friendship between them, I, I don't believe Indy's going anywhere now. <laughs> At Sunrise Sanctuary, a farm animal rescue in Marysville, Ohio, a daily ritual begins with the feeding of over 170 animals. I'm just trying to help as many animals as I could possibly afford to. One very special rescue is Chance, a six-year-old pit bull. Dogs have been known to attack livestock, cows and horses and pigs, but we don't have that issue. Pit bulls have long been groomed for fighting. There are dog fighting rings still going on at this, this day, which just is horrible. One barbaric sport that can be traced to the dark ages is a game called bull baiting. Chance's bulldog ancestors would have been trained to latch onto a bull's face, locking its powerful jaw. The match was not over until either the bull or the dog was dead which makes Chance's relationship with this giant creature all the more incredible. A one-ton bull named Wesley. You want to see your cow? You're going to go give kisses to Wesley? When Wesley got here, Chance was just naturally with us. Chance just took a liking to Wesley, probably because he was closest to his size, and he thought, oh, somebody to play with. And Wesley, you know, was probably looking for some nurturing because they took him from his mother. Both Chance and Wesley were taken from their mothers before they were ready to be weaned, and it was clear to Mindy the very first time the pair met in the barnyard that this was a special bond. The licking started right then and there, and they've been like best buddies ever since. Wesley kept growing though, and Chance kind of stayed the same, but they still are good buddies. The pair have been enjoying each other's company for hours on end, nearly every day since Wesley arrived, but their natural lifespans mean this friendship can't last forever. A cow can live about 25 years. He's only four now. Chance is about six, and the dog's lifespan, hopefully, you know, for Chance will be 15, 16. Chance will be long gone by the time Wesley ages. I don't know what a cow's thought process is. I would say he'd probably notice a difference for a little bit, and then he'll probably just, he's just gonna forget. He'll forget. It's all right. I know animals, and I know that a lot of people do not give them credit for remembering and for having feelings and for forming friendships and bonds. They do form bonds, and they do remember, and they do have friendships, and they do grieve, and they do bring joy to my soul.